Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the Justin's Lighthouse Recovery Video Series. Today we're talking about perfectionism. And this is a live lecture uh, we have for uh, purposes of anonymity. We obviously have the group off screen, but you may hear some feedback throughout, and that's, that's what's going on. Um, today we're talking about perfectionism, and that's, it's a really misunderstood topic. We think in terms of, you know, perfectionism. Oh, that guy's a perfectionist. Oh, she's such a perfectionist. Like, it's a good thing. But perfectionism is dangerous, and it is killing us addicts. It's a, Understanding this about yourself is a huge part of recovery. And, of course, I've got some, some uh, characteristics on the board that we're going to go through. But think of it this way. Perfectionism is dangerous for us. It's unhealthy behavior because it keeps us in a state of needing people, places, things, and situations to be a certain way in order for us to feel okay about ourselves. It's, it's tied with a lot of unrealistic expectations. You know, the big book talks about learning how to live life on life's terms. Perfectionism is us trying to force life on our terms, which is unrealistic. That's just never going to happen. And this is why we always, you know, we, we've lived a life with this underlying anxiety. We can have extreme anxiety all the time and not even understand why. We don't know how to deal with life. That's our problem. The drug use, the drinking, the sex and the gambling, the anger, the, all that's, that's symptomatic. One of our core issues is, is we have perfectionism. We don't know how to be still. We don't, uh, you know, if you feel anxious every time nothing is going on, you know, a, a big word in, in, you know, in our dysfunction is, oh, I'm so bored. The word boredom is not a, is not a term you'll ever hear anyone in recovery use. Because when we say, oh, I'm so bored, you know, we might as well say, gee, I'm so bored, I need you to entertain me. You know, think about that. Just think about the last week of your life. The times you felt most anxious were probably the times where nothing was going on around you, or so you thought, and you didn't know what to do with yourself, so you felt anxious. You needed entertainment. We don't know how to do the next right, responsible thing. We want to do the next fun thing that entertains us. That's all part of that perfectionism. Needing my world to be a certain way so that I can feel okay. And then when it goes bad, when we don't get that, we don't know how to deal with it. We're irritable, restless, discontent, and we think our solution is, is well, I just need to have fun. I just need to get something that I want. I just need to be able to do something that I want to do. Or not do something that I don't want to do. Okay, well, let's, let's finish these characteristics and then and we'll all talk throughout it. You know, the number one, uh, avoiding quietness and stillness. You know, one of the hardest things for addicts to do in early recovery is just learn how to be still. You know, why is that? Why is that such a difficult thing? Because we have a long history of keeping ourselves so busy that we don't have to think. Even in our addiction. I mean, that's all we're doing. We're just running around like crazy people all day long. Making deals, chasing money, manipulating people, using, the fallout of using, the hiding, the secrets. We can keep ourselves very, very busy at nothing. And that's not just an addict thing, that's because we can't stand to be still. Because when we're still, we start thinking, we start feeling. So perfectionism has become a coping skill. We developed this a long time ago as children. You know, we, we were kind of touched on this the other day when we were talking about anger and depression. It's a way that we developed in order to protect ourselves. If I can just make everything in my world happen the way I think it needs to happen, then I'll be okay. That's what's killing us. So in that, in that process, we overextend ourselves. 
We overextend our time and energy. We make commitments that we're never going to be able to keep. We make promises that we're never going to be able to, to live up to. We're constantly saying, yes, oh yeah, I want to do this, oh, I want to do that, oh, hey, let's do that too, oh, this would be cool, oh, let's do this, oh, let's do that. You're overextending your time. That's why, you know, in early recovery, especially in, you know, in this kind of environment, the first thing we hear is, slow down, don't do anything, just get into a groove, it'll happen, it'll come, just be patient, let it unfold. That's the opposite of, of how we've trained our brains to work. We want to stay so busy all the time getting what we want, doing what we want, that it's no wonder, you know, we're 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 years old and we've never healed anything. Our solution throughout our entire dysfunction has been, I just need to get more busy. Well, that hasn't worked. We're still dysfunctional, we're still addicts, we're still using, I still freak out when things don't go my way, I still can't handle difficult situations, I certainly can't handle when someone else uh, does something unexpected. You know, think about that for a second. You know, we, we talked about this last week. Growing, a lot of us grew up in, in, in environments where the, the, the atmosphere was unpredictable. You didn't really know what was going to happen next whether you grew up in an alcoholic home or just like a high control environment or a mental health uh, home where you know one day you're sitting on the sofa after school with your feet on the coffee table watching TV and eating a bag of chips and mom comes walking through and oh hi honey how was your day and then the very next day it could be the exact same scenario mom comes walking through and all heck breaks loose. Oh my god, how many times have I told you, get those feet off the coffee table, uh, stop eating chips on my sofa, blah, 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 blah. So we, we develop these, these self-protection skills, characteristics to, to just that, to do just that, to protect our emotions, to protect ourselves. We can get very anxious anticipating the behavior of someone else. That's perfectionism, and that's not working. It's killing us. We can obsess about the details of a task. We can get so overwhelmed over little, tiny, insignificant details. Why is that so important? Because you need those details in order to feel okay. Because if you don't get those details worked out, you don't feel okay. That's the sickness. A normal healthy person can strive to do a great job. You can strive to, you know, you're working on some project, you're doing something, you're studying, you're going to work, whatever it is. You can strive to be the best at it that you could possibly be. But you're still not going to be perfect. And a healthy, a normal healthy person can learn from that. Oh wow, you okay? Well, it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, but I can see how I can make some improvements, and then they'll continue on, continue getting better. That's how we grow. In our perfectionism, we literally take it personally because we need it to be perfect so bad, so we don't have to feel bad that when we don't get it perfect, or the world doesn't get it perfect, and and all that means is is the way we think it's supposed to be. It's kind of a it's kind of a misnomer. It's not we're not even really talking about perfection. We're talking about needing things to be the way we think it should be. But what do we know? Our thinking doesn't work. That's that's the difference. In our dysfunction, if I don't if life isn't perfect the way I think it should be, I feel less than. A normal healthy person, life doesn't turn out perfect in any given scenario, they can learn from that. They accept that. They don't, they don't personalize it. We personalize it. Oh my God, it's not perfect because I'm less than. And so we end up with a constant awareness of the imperfections of others. Now think about that for a minute. You know, you've got to really explore this in yourself. Oh no, that doesn't apply to me. I'm, I'm this nice guy, and I'm loving, and I'm compassionate. 
No, you got to really get honest about the thoughts that you have. Because we can sit around in silence and just pick apart the imperfections of others around us. You know, um, driving down the street, criticizing the guy in the car next to you because maybe he's got a car that you've always wanted. You know, well, since, since you haven't gotten that car yet, you feel less than, and here he is, and he's 10 years younger than, than you, and, and he looks like he doesn't even have any visible means of support, and yet he's got that car you always wanted. What's, what's our first reaction? To criticize the person, if only in our minds. We may not even say anything out loud, but we're criticizing that guy. Oh, that guy, he's, look at him, he's just a little pussy. Oh, that's daddy's car, I bet that's not even his car. You know, these are things we say to ourselves. Now, if we're with a, you know, a group of guys, we may say it out loud, and we all laugh, and we think it's funny. But what's happening in that moment is, is we're projecting our constant awareness of the imperfections of others. Why? Because it makes us feel bad. That's not normal. That's sick. That's our sickness. That's the kind of stuff that leads us deeper and deeper and deeper into our addiction. And just because we're sober today doesn't mean, you know, we've got smooth sailing ahead. we got to understand this stuff about ourselves or life just isn't going to get much different. You may never use again, but life just isn't going to change very much because we're still going to have these same characteristics. We tend to have uh, rigid and purposeless rituals. You know, think about that. Okay, so... And, and if you miss one of those rituals, you'll, you know, you'll catch it, and, and you'll have an anxious moment about it, and oh, oh my God, man, I just, you know, we all tend to have a routine in the morning, you, know, you get up, make your bed, brush your teeth, you know, whatever your, whatever your format is, well, I brush my teeth first, and then I take a shower, and then I wash my hair first, and then I condition, and then I soap up, and then I dry off, and then I always put my towel here, and then I always keep my brush over here, or whatever, and we do that in a certain order, there's nothing wrong with that. that would, that's good structure. But get one of those out of order one day and see how you feel emotionally. Those are the, the that, that lends itself to these rigid, purposeless rituals. Now, I'm just using that as an example because that's a simple one. You guys have to really explore and apply this in your own lives and take a really good look at it. What are the things, I mean, I still catch myself doing this, but, but that's kind of the, the whole point, is I can catch myself doing it now because I understand this about myself. And, you know, the big red flag is, is, is I kind of start feeling a little stuck. I feel stuck. My anxiety level starts going up, and I, and, and I you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, you know, maybe flustered a little bit, and then I realize, wait a second, it's just not that big a deal. I, I, don't, I just don't remember where I put the, the weed eater string. It's going to be fine. I got, I got string on my thing now. I'm going to go weed eat. But we can drive ourselves crazy with these little bitty detailed things. We, uh, we're scared to death to let people see our mistakes. And to us, uh, just being human is a mistake. Right? We've spent a lifetime trying to cover that up, trying to project to the world that we've got it all together. I don't make mistakes. This is why we have a hard time admitting when we're wrong. You know, and it, just because we're sober doesn't mean it's not there. It's still there until we change. But we've got to understand this about ourselves. We, we have such a sense of inadequacy. We're not inadequate. We have a sense of inadequacy. When things don't go our way, we feel less than. But see, that's not reality. Things don't go a lot of people's way. But a, a normal, healthy person can respond to those things better than we can. Understand, you know, and it, it's a whole other lecture in and of itself. Understand this is centered in trauma. That's how we develop this perfectionism. It's our self-protection. We feel we have a sense of inadequacy, and so how do we deal with that? 
we, we try to project an image of the opposite of inadequacy. Not only am I not inadequate, I'm, I'm way better than. I don't make mistakes. If anything goes wrong, it's definitely not my fault. And, you know, the shameful, shameless paradigm that we talk about so much. Well, that's what we're covering up. So, when we're afraid to let our humanness show, you know, what's that going to look like? Not a very pleasant person to be around. Nothing's ever our fault. Uh, we don't make any mistakes. Every time something goes wrong, it's somebody else. Criticize, criticize, criticize. We love to point out the faults of others, people, places, things, and situations. Well, that's what's keeping us sick because it keeps the focus off ourselves. We compete mentally and behaviorally all the time, constantly sizing each other up. You know, we meet new people and we're, we're sizing them up. And you do this whether you realize it or not. It's part of our sickness. It's part of that perfectionism. Well, what can this guy offer me? I'll bet, oh, I heard this one guy, and he talks about he played baseball. Well, I played baseball. I'll bet he wasn't as good as I was. You know, we can have these conversations with ourselves, and then we can't figure out why we have so much anxiety. Because our thinking is so screwed up and so focused on all the wrong things that just aren't that important. This is why, what leads to an all-or-nothing attitude. You know, I either, I either get my way or forget it. I either do what I want to do or I don't want to do anything. And, I mean, you guys see that play out just in this kind of environment. You know, if, if not in yourself yet, you'll see it in others. But learn from that because it's all the same. We all have these same characteristics Sometimes it's, one might be more extreme in someone than another, but we have them. It's instead of, instead of uh, critiquing each other, we need to notice, you know, like AA talks about, notice the similarities in each other. That's how we learn more about ourselves. That's how we grow. We tend to struggle with our spirituality. And, you know, every time we do a spiritual group, it always comes up. It always comes up. We talk about people's perspective on God, and it always comes up. You know, I just save God for the big stuff. Um, I've got to get my affairs in order before I can really have a spiritual relationship with a higher power. That's perfectionism. I don't deserve it yet, but I can earn it. And so, these are the people who struggle with their spirituality. They're still trying to earn their relationship with their higher power. Like my sponsor used to ask me all the time, how's that working for you? It's not. We've, we've got to understand that this is not an asset. This is one of our defects. Change it. doesn't matter what you think about it. Our thinking doesn't work. This is why we don't handle criticism very well. We personalize it. You know, we, we do accountability group and stuff, and man, people get really upset because, because in our sickness, we think if someone, if someone reaches out to me and tries to help me understand a, a negative aspect of myself, I think it's because they don't like me. Well, that nothing's farther from the truth. In fact, it's just the opposite. Think about the way we treat people that we really don't like. We just stay away from them. We don't engage in them. We try not to have conversations with them. We certainly don't give them any information. When, when people are helping us understand more about ourselves, that's the opposite of not liking us. That's someone who's loving us. But we're not familiar with love. We don't really know how to take that, so we just personalize it. We have difficulty making decisions, and at, by this time, it's pretty obvious why. We're so afraid we're going to make the wrong decision, so we don't want to make any decision. You guys make, hey, what do you want for dinner? Oh, I don't know, whatever you decide. But we don't stop there. We, we'll put the responsibility of a potentially bad situation. Remember this purposeless 
so much of this is just purposeless. It's all about trying to protect ourselves. It's not really about living life. We're just trying to protect ourselves. So if I make decisions and uh, I say, okay, hey, let's, uh, whatever, let's, let's go have pizza tonight. And it turns out that the pizza wasn't very good. And, and on the way back, everyone's saying, man, I'm, I've had way better pizza before. That pizza sucked. We think they're criticizing us. And we're so afraid to put ourselves out there, so we just don't want to make any decisions. And I'm just using food as an example because it's a pretty obvious one. It's an easy one. But explore that in yourself. Notice how that fits so many areas of our life. I don't want to make decisions. Just, just tell me what next and I'll do next. But we don't, we don't let it stop there. And then we might be the one criticizing. Oh, you go, you go ahead and make that decision, and then I'm the one criticizing. We, and, and ultimately, we just try to do a perfect recovery program. We just try to get everything perfect. I, I got up at 6 a.m., and I ran three miles, and then I read 15 minutes of the big book, and then I read 25 minutes of the N.A. book, and then I did my, my morning meditation for 12 minutes, and then I went to the gym, and then I da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. I finished all my assignments today like a good little boy, and now you know I'm, per, I'm trying to do a perfect recovery program. Here's the problem with that. First of all, that's that's kind of you know that that's what you're forced into in like a short-term clinical program, and that's why that's the number one reason why the success rates are so low in say a 30-day clinical program because it's literally a race to the finish. It's, you know, it's, you get up, you do these, do your workbook assignments, go to this group, go to this class, da 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 and you get to the end of that 30 days later, and you've done all this work, and you're feeling really good about yourself. The problem is you haven't changed anything. You're still filled with perfectionism. you still got all the defects that you had. You still think the wrong way. You still compete mentally and behaviorally. Nothing has changed in you. You're still personalizing every single thing. You're still stuck in denial, et cetera, et cetera. The worst thing we can do is to try to get a work a, a perfect recovery program. And, and that goes with judging ourselves harshly. Constantly, we're, we judge ourselves harshly, but we're measuring ourselves with, with wrong gauges. We tend to measure ourselves based on our, our output. We'll look at all this external stuff. I've, I've done all these workbook assignments, therefore I must be good. But then we get some criticism. Well, but you know, you're still, you're still being mean to people and you're still, you know, not cleaning up after yourself and you're still, you know, when we're, when we're all working on projects and stuff, you're still, you know, isolating and all these intangible things about what what is required for a person to actually change, we don't do any of those. We hide behind our perfectionism. But I've done all this stuff over here. That makes me okay. You know, this group is dealing with, an, uh, with a scenario just like that right now. Well, I'm you know, I'm the best one in the group. I've, I've, I read more than anybody. I write more than anybody. I've done more assignments than anybody. Therefore, I must be better than everybody. That's perfectionism. And we all know how that worked out. It didn't. Okay, so look at these in the red. Perfectionism literally keeps us in a state of either one extreme or the other. That's that all or nothing. Perfectionism that need to have everything a certain way or else keeps us either in a state of feeling less than or acting better than. Well, that's, that's not change. That's the only thing missing is uh, our drug use. That's the exact same behavior. It's the exact same thinking. It's an old coping skill that protected us from being hurt. So in order to overcome this, in order to understand this more about ourselves, we've got to be willing to take some more emotional risks 
only we take it with a new group of people. We've got to allow ourselves to be teachable and to be more vulnerable. What are you, what are you protecting? You know, think about that. What are you protecting? I'm, I'm protecting my sense of self. Or I think I am. I'm protecting who I want everyone to think I am. I'm protecting being human. I don't want anyone to see my humanness because then you won't accept me. It's just not true. But you'll never know, you'll never get to experience that until we get teachable, until we explore these things in ourselves, until we get vulnerable and we become willing to open ourselves up to a new set of people. People that we can trust. You know, we don't, we don't really need to trust anything right now. That's not, a, that's not a prerequisite. What we need to focus on is just being trustworthy and doing what comes next. So, as we get these opportunities to look at ourselves, to talk about ourselves, we just we begin to do it in an honest way. Perfectionism is dishonest. It's not real. It's unrealistic. You're never going to get people, places, things, and situations to fall into place the way you want them to fall into place. Our solution is learning how to live life on life's terms. But in order for me to be able to do that, I've got to be willing to heal. Because that's why I do that. Right? That's why we hide behind perfectionism. Because we are so filled with pain and hurt and, and um, inadequacies and insecurities and impulsivities and insensitivities and immaturities. It's all, it all goes together. It's all it's one big old ball of dysfunction. So it's great that we're not using today, but we won't, we won't necessarily stay sober until we clean out all this crap, and you've got to recognize that it's there in the first place. Okay, we'll, um, I'll, uh, we'll, we can take questions off, off, uh, off camera. Thank you guys for tuning in to Justin's Lighthouse video series. Keep checking back. Our website is www.justinslighthouse.com. Thank you.